read me romance read read me romance read me romance read read me romance you could take a look in a book that's fine or you could sit back relax and unwind and read me romance read read me romance welcome back lady listeners hey lady listeners thanks for joining us again it's thursday you're getting the second installment of Andy Fenichel's Lane to Fame. So, but before that, we're going to talk some shit. Let's do it. <laughs> tell me about Reddit. Like you oh, just okay. That's right. tell, me, tell me you've just discovered Reddit. I think well, it's been around for a while, though. It's been around on. for a while. Because I know my husband will sometimes send me links. He'll see. Because he actually followed when I started making him watch that Love After Lockup with me. Mm-hmm. He started sending me like when he would see articles, but I never like clicked through it. I would read the article, but then like the whole Kanye Kim thing happened. <laughs> Is that what sent you to it? Yes. And oh then I was my like, God. Okay. And then I realized I could follow, like follow the mm-hmm. Kardashian topics, yep. follow the housewives talk, but follow Listen, oh, Reddit oh, is like know. TikTok. It's a succubus. You get on that it app. It is a succubus. You get on it and you just disappear. Hours disappear on that app. We're readers. So it does mm-hmm. not bother me to read these articles upon just articles. Just keep on going. Yep. Or mm-hmm. people's talking shit or whatever. Mm-hmm. The- fan theories. <laughs> I was just like, I've gone down. And I can do it. I'll go lay down. I'll be like, oh, let me open Reddit. And even today, I started my first conversation. Oh, God. And then it was like, all these people responded. I was talking about something from like 10 years ago. <laughs> but it's like, there's always people to talk to you. But yeah, I'd gotten on there because the whole Kanye Kim thing. I was like, I was one of those people. I didn't even care about the Kanye Kim thing. But when he started doing the Instagram stuff, I just could not stop talking. <laughs> like, why could not go to his i refuse to follow him mm-hmm. but i would go check his instagram like what's this motherfucker done what now? was he up, what was he up to what's he doing he just posts the craziest shit he's post sharing him and uh kim's screenshots of their phone conversations oh, talking about you know making fun of uh pete davison mm-hmm. which Reddit made me realize he's hot. Like people did picture schemes of him. Like I never thought Pete Davis was like hot until people like did like these pictures of him. Like, mm-hmm. all right, I see. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he is hot. And the way he's like, you know, somebody said like he's got that energy of like you could fart in his mouth while he's eating your ass and he would say thank you. Like, he just, he would fuck no, you. No, he does like, have big dick energy. Yeah. Like, he would not care how dirty you are. He would still fuck you and he love it. He doesn't care. He doesn't give a shit. He's still down. Yep. That's why she's lucky to have. Because right now, he does not. Kanye is trying to, like, yep. bully him, calling mm-hmm. him games. And this motherfucker does not care. Yeah, you yeah. are not calling he him anything. Funny. He hasn't yeah. called himself. Yeah, I think that's what I like about him too. Is like when he was on SNL, he was the first person to make fun of himself, you know. Yeah. And I loved his movie, like the King of Long Island. What is it, King of Staten Island, or whatever his movie was? That was really fun when we watched that. But I think it's hilarious. And yeah, he's got that funny guys always get me. Like they don't have to be be skinny, fat, whatever. If they're funny, doing something because I've seen all the past women he's been with, and I was Mm -hmm. like, these are some hot. Kate Beckinsale, Ariana Grande, (laughs) like, like just a lot of hard for him. Yeah, like in love. You know, that's what that's one of the things I'll never forget. Pete Davidson on his stand up where he was doing his last one where he was like really upset when Ariana Grande she posted that um. She was like, yeah, we broke up. Nice dick, though. And he was like, what would the world say? He was like, everybody was like, yeah, ha, ha, ha. He was like, what would the world say if I was like, yeah, yeah, nice pussy, though. He was like, how would that sound if I said that? He was like, it's not cool. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, he has feelings about this. (laughs) And I bet you he has a big dick. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He acts yep. like he has a big dick because he doesn't care. He wears a shirt with a kitten on it. <laughs> Have you seen his care. tattoos? He doesn't give a shit about he anything. Has- but I he's guess, a big I'm Harry not, Potter fan. That's I'm not completely be shocked because I did watch the reunion of the last Kardashians because I'd watched mm-hmm. some of the beginning seasons and then I quit because I was mm-hmm. Team Taylor. Mm-hmm. 
And I did watch the reunion just because I kind of wanted to see. I felt like it was closing, even though they're going to Hulu now or whatever. Mm -hmm. I was like, I want to see this close. And she said, when she talked about Kanye, she was like, I just want the simple things. Somebody to hold my hand and go to the Mm -hmm. movies with. She's like, it's not that way. Yeah. With Kanye. No, because he, he's he's mentally unstable. Well, she said even in the show at the end or whatever, she'd been like, he needs somebody that can be with him. She's like, I'm not that person. I can't travel with him. And I want him to find that girl that can. Mm-hmm. She's like, but I can't do that. I'm here. Yeah. My life is in L.A. She does have it. She really is trying to become a lawyer. She really is taking um, her war on crime or whatever mm-hmm. seriously yeah. or whatever getting people out of jail that are wrongfully incarcerated for too long and stuff. She's yeah. really taking that shit seriously. And so she can't just go gallivanting. Yeah. Into yeah. Wyoming. Yeah. You know, I think maybe, I don't know. Like I, I obviously I don't know them or the relationship, but it just seems like, you know, Kanye's just really uh, mentally unstable. You know, he, he has some mental health issues that he really should address. Well, somebody, Before he tries to like tell her what's going on. There's a psychologist that I started listening to because he was breaking down some of the stuff for Sister Wives for me. Mm-hmm. And he did a little <laughs> skit on Kanye where he broke down why he's not a fan of Kanye. Kanye is not a narcissist. Mm-hmm. But he did and he explained that why. And he also broke down bipolar. I didn't realize there was two sets. Mm-hmm. But in one of the sets that he thinks Kanye has is you don't fall into a great depression. You just fall into more of a normalness or whatever, Mm -hmm. and you spike up into these manic episodes. And he says that sometimes they actually enjoy the manic, Mm -hmm. and they don't want to lose the manic. So that's why they don't want to go on their medicines. Yeah. Okay. He's like, because a lot of people are expecting him to fall down into this Mm -hmm. depression and not get out of bed. He says, no, it's not always like that. It's just a speak a peak of this and then just manic. Yeah. Where it's nothing. And then manic. Yeah. Where it's like feeling a feeling feels good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. And his manic episodes. So he's like, okay, that makes sense. So this is how you ended up on Reddit. Cause you were looking at all this. Yes. (laughs) I was just getting annoyed because he really, he looks at women as objects. Mm Mm-hmm. And now he's, like, sexualizing his daughters. Like, he, it annoys me when men are like, you can't put her in a tank top. It's sexualizing her. I'm like, no, you were sexualizing her. Yeah. Yeah, Nobody, you just did that. I don't think Mm -hmm. men understand that. Yeah. That, no, when you said that and you made it that way, I didn't think when my daughter put on a tank top that she was sexy or whatever. It was the Mm -hmm. shirt she picked to wear. You're the one that's made it that way. Yeah. We know he's, he's, I don't know. Like you say, if he's seen women as objects his whole life, why wouldn't he see his daughters that way as objects for other men to stare at? Well, I knew they were going downhill because I think when I stopped watching was like one season when he was like, she got dressed up for some show or whatever. And he was like, that's too sexy. I don't want my wife being looked at as like a sex object. And she's kind of (laughs) like, That what? This is what I do. I know. We're like, did you not know how she got her career with sex tape? Like, I think like, he, I, I could tell when they were <laughs> recording that she was generally shocked he said it. Yeah. Because yeah. she, like, took a second to respond. Like, her eyes got big. Like, I am about to, have a, I can't have a fight with him on TV, so how do yeah. I? Uh-huh. But he goes back and forth because then he dresses up the new models mm-hmm. the same way that he's dating or whatever. He says he's dating. But that's how I got onto Reddit, and there's all these articles, <laughs> and it's addictive to go on Reddit, but I'm not leaving it. <laughs> all right, let's read some emails. <laughs> you can tell me about all the things you learn on Reddit. <laughs> I love it. There's right. book talk on, there's book Reddit too. Yes, there's book talk or book book Reddit. Is that what they yeah, call it? Sorry. Like book talk, book Reddit? No, I just, I'm accidentally called it book talk. So oh, okay. Book talk. I don't know if they hashtag talk. it like book Reddit. <laughs> no, but there's like the book world, romance mm-hmm. book world on Reddit as well. You can find anything on Reddit though. That's anything really you want to know, it's on there. 
All right. This one's entitled Wedding Disaster. Please don't say my name. <laughs> this is the very top of this. Okay. I'll try not to say it, Mary. I'm just kidding. That's our name. <laughs> Hello, lady podcasters. I love listening to you. Don't pay attention to the people who say y'all talk too much. Uh, Since we talk too much. <laughs> I think you said it before about a new oh, okay. or something. I don't know. I love Monday and Fridays because of the banter. Oh, this is when we used to do Monday, Friday episodes. Now we're Tuesday, Thursday. Weddings are usually a bit boring. You know, everything is going to follow the same pattern. Do you take this woman? Do you take this man? Yada, yada, yada. The best wedding I've ever been to. The preacher called the groom by the wrong name twice. Oh, God. I love it. To make things worse, it was the bride's ex-boyfriend's name. Mm. <gasps> Shut up. The bride calmly corrected him both times. The nervous giggles in the audience became full out laughs the second time. Needless to say, the marriage didn't last. Aww. No, oh, I'm not going to say her name. That was really good. I'm going to call you out. But it's true. <laughs> weddings are so boring. Like, yeah. I hate getting invited to weddings. Like, I just want to go to the reception. Do you know ours was eight minutes long? Our friends timed go. it. Yep. That's what I'm talking about. My friend Seth timed it because he was like, he saw, he was like, I, he's like, I saw everybody setting up for the wedding before you guys came out. And he was like, there's not a lot of people here. And he's like, I bet this is over fast. And he said he timed it from the time I walked out mm -hmm. to the time Kevin and I left. And he was like, eight minutes. That was it. And I was like, I'm That's down perfect. for the reception. Yeah. I the reception don't... was like six hours. Yeah, <laughs> so like, that I'm was down the whole for thing. that. That's great. Yeah. But I just, it's just too much. It's normal. I get tired of actually writing the wedding scene sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I just want to skip over. Let's do it. You know, we don't ever scene. hardly write those, right? <laughs> yeah, because I don't, I won't line myself up to do it. I'll like do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or they're leaving because it's yeah. always the same. Mm -hmm. we Unless you write some really it. cute vows. Yeah. Or like they have sex in the closet right before mm -hmm. the ceremony. <laughs> but then you just skip over the ceremony. Mm -hmm. still. Yeah. True. <laughs> All right. This one's entitled In Honor of Sarah Sierra Simone. When I was in youth group, we would occasionally go on overnight trips with or to other churches. They didn't separate boys and girls because we usually spend the night in one large room with the other youth groups. Mm. My boyfriend. They don't know better. <laughs> that's dangerous. My boyfriend, now husband, and I would get as close as we could to using blankets, sweaters, etc. We would cover our bottom half and he'd finger me while I checked him off. We were just horny teenagers. We'd mm -hmm. take anything we could get away with. Hell yeah. That's it. That's the whole email. I love it. This is <laughs> that's so talking. hot. That, I know. This is that's so hot. I love that. Um, this one's entitled MM. Y'all, yes, please. <laughs> I know I just wrote you earlier, but please do mail mail. I love Alice Winters, Lisa Masters, Kari Z, L.A. Wit. Do more of that. I love how they can put the comedy in their books, but still be so sweet and genuine. That's hard to get in M and male, female, or maybe I just suck at finding them. That being said, I do like other mail mail. Doesn't have to be funny. Okay, I'm gonna go fuck my night up and stop blowing up your emails. Have a great day, Sam. <laughs> I guess you know, she sent several emails at once. Um, I always recommend the mail mail, K Webster. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, the, the um, the Hood River Rat. Yeah, that Hood one? River yeah. Rat. Uh huh. I like a good mail mail because I feel like whenever I mm -hmm. read romance and it's male and female, I kind of slip myself in the female role. Mm hmm. But when I read Mail Mail, I feel like I'm reading, like, best friends. Yeah. So I kind of, like, yeah. I can actually, I'm okay with tropes I'm mm -hmm. normally not okay with. Yeah. Like, second chance romance mm -hmm. or and not being safe because these things happen in their lives. I don't know. Because it's, yep. like, I feel like friends I'm not, lovers. Like, yeah. I'm not as in it. Mm -hmm. and it's no, just I agree. Yeah, it doesn't Weird. feel like it's a hurt against you. Yeah. And I have a really hard time with like reading stories that aren't kind to women mm -hmm. because I'm just like, women deserve all the things. <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah. I just feel, I don't know. I just I can get away with a lot more in male mail and it still gives me all those fun, giddy, excited feelings. I agree. I totally agree. All right. This one's entitled, well, this one's got no subject. It says, oh my God, y'all. <laughs> it's a good bunch of exclamations. I'm totally geeking out right now. You're reading my email on the podcast, so thanks for that. I'm still catching up, but I decided to listen to the recent ones, too. I'm up to September 2021. I'm so close. On episode 140.1, you were talking about your old friend that was messaging you and being aggressive as fuck. 
I don't remember. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> These men are just immature. Their own insecurities cause them to act this way. His wife didn't do anything because he treats her the same way, and she doesn't see much wrong with it. Also, I don't think he was sending these memes because you're a woman. It's because of your difference of opinions. I'm sure he does it to other men also. This guy is just a class A dick. <laughs> and I would totally punch him, my husband in the dick if he acted like this towards someone. All right. I have to share. A few episodes back from the one I'm on, y'all made a comment about why are all these quiet men with loud ass women? So I asked my husband. He's quiet and loves to complain and loves to complain about not just how loud I am, but my need to make noise all the damn time. Anyway, I asked him and he looked shook. Like he hadn't thought about it before. And his response was, I don't know. Why are you so loud? I just laughed and told him we balance each other out. And he said we could balance each other out a little less. <laughs> and I should feel more than welcome to be quieter. I love my husband and he loves that I'm loud, even if he won't admit it. You can tell because he thinks I'm mad or if he thinks I'm mad or sick, I'm not, I'm not being super loud. I've trained him well, LOL. One last thing. You were talking about body image and being happy with how you are. That sat so well with me. It was great to hear it put in words. I recently, over the last year, decided to just be content with how I am. If I work out, it's about overall health as opposed to my image. I'm not even close to a small woman, size 18 slash 20. I have stretch marks and scars, and I constantly walk around my house with without pants and even wear crop tops to bed. I've noticed that my husband often can't keep his eyes off me when I just own it. Confidence is sexy. Not yes. that I have ever been a lights off under the covers lover, but it's noticeable when I'm feeling myself than when I'm not. He's turned on when I feel myself. So, yes, feel yourself. It's your body. It's what you have. Love it. You can't expect others to love what you have when you don't love it yourself. That's all. Sorry, this is such a long-winded email. Y'all are just so in damn inspirational. Sam in Michigan. Again, yes, the same Sam from the other email. It says, shit, I totally forgot. I don't think I've heard you guys mention Megan Wade. I'm currently reading her Sugar Curve series before I go to bed. Great quick reads. Uh, it would be awesome to hear her stuff on the podcast sometime. We should actually reach out to her. Yeah, I like that. That's a good yeah, idea. I like, like sugar curves. That sounds sexy. She has a lot of curvy girls. Like, and she puts, she finds images to put on covers and stuff. She's oh, always I got, like I think, that. a donut or a cupcake up in the corner. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you're talking to me. <laughs> All right. This one's entitled. Wait, Some, speaking what? of cupcake. What? Her email actually reminded me of a lot of stuff because I'm actually arguing with my husband right now. We're in a fight. <laughs> okay. well, I think we're in a fight. He made me mad because oh. I accidentally, I went to Dairy Queen. I had his debit card mm -hmm. and I gave it to them. They didn't give it back to me. And then I called back down the road because I realized, mm -hmm. they're like, yeah, just come in with your ID. So he had to go back to Dairy Queen. <laughs> yes. But he's being a dick about it. It's not like I meant to do it. He was like huffing around. Did he get an ice cream while he was up there? No, I'd already got it because. <laughs> you didn't get another one? Guys, listen to this. They, if you love the Dairy Queen ice cream cake like I do, but you can't buy a whole fucking cake all the time because it's a damn cake, they are making it in cupcakes. Okay. And it is wonderful. How do they do it? It just looks like a cup. They fill up like a sundae thingy, mm -hmm. and it's got the chocolate, then the cookie crumble, the fudge, then the vanilla ice cream, and the whipped cream stuff on top. Mm -hmm. It is wonderful, and it's actually better than the cake. Because it's fresh. I don't know. I don't think it's because it's fresh. I think when they're making it in the cupcake, mm -hmm. they have to do some of the layers thicker. Ooh. So the cookie layer mm -hmm. is way, it's like twice as thick. That's the so, best layer. Yes. And so is the fudge layer. It's like twice as thick. That I'm whole layer right there. Now. Damn it. So it is like, it's double better than the cake. Because <laughs> sometimes even when I get the cake, I'll like saw off some of the ice cream top. Because mm -hmm. I don't yeah. want all that ice cream. I want more of the cookie. Yeah, same. It is like the perfect proportion in the cupcake. And they give you more of that fluffy top than you get on the cake. Because they just that put it on the great. side. Mm -hmm. It's so fucking good, guys. I'm eating like two a day. It's not okay. <laughs> I'll have to check. Our Dairy Queen isn't great. It's like attached to a gas station. So mm -hmm. Our Taco Bell is that way. Oh, God. I, okay. I'm glad I have that. Then I couldn't handle that with my Taco Bell. Not as often as I can. And they there. never have the drive through open. They put a trash can in it. So you can't go through That's it. some bullshit. Then I'd never bullshit. go. I, I would never lose go. so much weight. 
<laughs> they shut down. Let's All talk right. about. I just had to tell you guys about it. No, I'm glad they you did. Were fucking wonderful. That's your PSI today, guys. That's your, <laughs> your little boost of confidence. Go get that. <laughs> And this one's entitled Some Super Superstitions. Hi, Leah and Mel. I was listening to the podcast and heard you talk about superstitions. So I thought I'd tell you about some superstitions of mine. At least I think they're called superstitions. The first one is I don't stab my food. What I mean is that but I don't stick a fork into my food and leave it there. It's some sort of it's sort of tied to negative things in Japan. I'm Japanese Canadian, so whenever I do it, or someone else does it, I am extremely uncomfortable. I mean, if I need to stab a piece of food to get it onto my plate, that's fine. But unless I get the fork, but unless I get the fork out, I need to hold the fork until I have a way of taking it out and setting it down on the plate. The second is that I don't write with a red pen unless it's for mistakes and stuff. I can't write with a red pen without feeling weird. It's like bad luck or something. Thanks for reading. I think it's Elia. I think that's how you say name. Maybe. You know, I saw this Maybe study. Like, oh, sorry. Maybe no, like no, no, a red ahead. pen, you feel like you're yelling or scolding. Yeah. Well, I saw this study like years ago. I'd seen it. And it was like that people, if you write something in red, people are less likely to read it because it's like a, a mistake or an error or something like that. Then they were like the most attractive thing to read is in blue. They're like, if you want someone to read what you're writing, put it in blue. And I was like, oh, I don't, I don't know. Like, uh, I thought that was really interesting, but uh, who knows? Maybe that's fucking wrong. I don't know. It I'm makes sense. Right. I don't want to read a <laughs> yeah. bunch of like air stuff. I'll just skip over it. I know. Well, these last two emails are long, so I'll save them for next week. Um. So just so we don't have to make you guys wait any longer <laughs> to get into Andy's last episode. So we have the second installment of Lane to Fame today. Um, just a reminder that um, Carnival Lane is live um, and Dad Bod Handyman is also available. I love that title. Andy is giving away two signed copies of that book this week. So make sure you enter the giveaway. And the pre-order for Changing Lanes, which is a May-December romance, is 99 cents. So the pre-order is up on that. And then the other pre-order for Heavy Petting, which is a best friend's brother romance which I love, is also 99 cents. So make sure you get both of those pre-orders for 99 cents now. And I think that's it. Let's send them to the second installment of Lane to Fame. We'll see you guys on the other side. Chapter 4 Sadie Nothing in my entire life has felt as right as being with Matthew Lane. Resting against him in the tub, his arms around me and his cock half hard between my ass cheeks. I could prune up and die here. I wiggle my ass to feel more of him, and the soapy water sloshes from side to side. I don't know if I can ever get enough of you. He runs his tongue along the shell of my ear. That is all part of my evil plan. I'll make love to you until you can't do without me. Taking his hand from where it splayed over my abdomen, I press his fingers between my legs. Good plan. Slipping one finger inside me, he teases my clit with the palm of his hand and pinches my nipple with his other hand. Sadie, will you stand up? I hate to move away from him, even for a moment, but I do as he asks. Expecting him to get up, I am delighted when his tongue presses between my cheeks and licks a line upward. My knees buckle, but Matthew holds my hips. Lean forward, baby. Put your hands on the side of the tub. It's one of those deep clawfoot tubs with a rounded side, so it's easy to do as he asks and expose my pussy to him. My body folds over his bent knees, and I relax my thighs so they open for him. I'm falling for this man hard, but I think I'm already in love with his tongue. He laps at my pussy, toys with my clit using the tip of his tongue, and licks me front to back. My asshole is super sensitive, and I scream his name again and again, along with the names of several deities. Legs quivering, I'm struggling to keep my feet and not drown myself and possibly him too. 
Just when I can't hold on any longer, he stands, wraps his arms around me, and lifts me out of the tub. With my toes in the soft, white bath mat, I sit on the edge of the tub while he hands me a towel. Tucking it around my chest, I long to see what he wants next. I've never been much for letting my partner take control of the sex. It always seemed too submissive for me, but with Matthew... I like letting him have control just as much as I like riding him hot and hard. Dripping on the gray tile floor, he looks at me with so much passion, it's almost too much. But I won't look away. Dropping to his knees, he presses his shoulders between my thighs, spreading me wide. I keep a death grip on the edge of the tub as he sucks and licks my clit relentlessly. To keep from tumbling back as my orgasm crashes, I push forward, and he rolls to his back with me on top of him. Someone could get hurt around here. I'll never let anything hurt you. He arches up to kiss me. As I open for him, our tongues meet with the same spark as the first kiss. I impale myself on his thick cock. You feel so good. So right. Sitting up, he uses his crossed leg thighs to lift and lower me on his shaft. You are perfect. With my legs wrapped around him, I press my forearms to his shoulders, increasing the speed while letting gravity bring me to him over and over again. Every time he fills me, my clit rubs against him. I've never been like this. Say my name. Sadie. His command is followed by a light bite on my nipple. Matthew, Matthew, Matthew. My body vibrates and pulses around him. Moaning, he thrusts once, twice, and again. He lifts me and comes between us. Fuck, no condom. Something must be wrong with me if I didn't even think about protection. Even knowing it now, I'm happy. Not worried or embarrassed. Happy. Maybe happier than I've been in my entire life. I'm clean. I haven't had sex with anyone in over a year. Pressing his forehead to mine, he breathes hard and fast. Why not? I shrug and get up. It's easier. Relationships get complicated, and most of the time it's not worth it. I clean myself up with the washcloth, grab my jeans from the floor, and step out of the bathroom. I get dressed and flop on the couch. What is it about this guy that makes him feel different from other men? Is it the novelty of someone outside the business? It's got to be more than that. A few minutes later, Matthew sits next to me and takes my hand. I'm clean too, but I should have taken better care of you. I'm sorry. I loved having you inside me without any barriers. It's too honest, but I can't seem to help myself. He closes his eyes and lifts my hand to his lips. This is complicated, Sadie. It is for me, at least. Is this worth it? I don't know the answer to his question. I tell him the only thing I know for sure. I don't want this to end. Silently, we sit and stare at the blank TV for a long time. I want this to be easy, but it's hard to push away years of bad relationships and humiliating breakups that always end up on the evening news. Matthew? Hmm. I've never had a successful relationship. I don't want to add you to a long line of mistakes. Please don't be a mistake. I don't like the desperation in my voice. It's not like me to show my feelings like this. Gripping my thighs, he pulls me onto his lap and rests his head against my chest. I don't want you to ever think of me that way. I have no idea how any of this can work out, but please don't have regrets. Even if you go back to your life and leave me in mine, I'll always be here for you, Sadie. Always. No one can make a promise like that. He barely knows me. Don't make promises you can't keep. 
I always keep my promises. He's so confident that I believe him. The idea of a person in the world who will always be there for me floods me with joy. True or not, I love the idea of it. How about that walk on the beach now? Sounds good. Shoes and a ball cap later, and we're hand in hand strolling the New Jersey shore. It's a little windy, so we have very little company. It's not like I'm a normal girl on a date with a guy. It won't last. It can't. But I'm going to milk it for as long as I can. I grew up in the mountains. It must have been nice to have both the mountains and ocean nearby. New Jersey has almost every terrain, sand barrens, swamps, forests, lakes, mountains, and ocean, not to mention the cities and industry. Most people only see the strip of road between the airport and New York City and miss how pretty the state is. Pride rings in his voice. My North Carolina Smoky Mountains are pretty too. I don't know why I feel the need to defend the town of 800 people where I grew up. It's stunning there. My cousin, Georgia, and I hiked there a few years ago. We loved it. He walks us closer to the water and turns to look out. Lights come on a freighter in the distance as the sky goes gray with the sun setting behind us. I like the idea of you in North Carolina. I close my eyes and let the breeze whip at my face. I've traveled a lot. I should have brought my camera with me. The sky is beautiful, the way the pink and purple meet the glare off the sea. He points to the horizon. For me, it's just nice to be anonymous. Like freedom, even if it's an illusion. Stepping behind me, he wraps an arm around my waist and one across my chest. His lips press against my head. I'm glad you can have this and happy I can give it to you. What made you want to be famous? I never did. I sigh. I wanted to play my music and for people to like it. Fame never really occurred to me. Then a few years into the struggle, I was on the charts. Everyone called me an overnight success. Of course, for me, it wasn't overnight. No one tells you that you're going to lose every moment of privacy and that people you love and thought you could trust will lie, cheat, and steal from you. He tightens his hold. I'm sorry. It's okay. My first agent was a nightmare, and I had to shed a few family members from my inner circle, but that's how you learn who people really are. Finding Lucas was a complete turnaround for me personally. It took me a long time to trust him or anyone, but now things are better. My band is fantastic. What about friends? It's getting dark, and his stomach rumbles. We better get you something to eat. Saved by hunger pains, I pull out of his embrace and take his hand. Chapter 5 Matthew Sunrise pulls me out of bed early, as it always does at the shore. I pull on my clothes and grab my camera to catch the colors as they change with the coming day. The beach is empty except for a guy walking his puppy. I take a few shots of the adorable beagle and move on to find a dozen wonderful things to snap before heading back to the house. Bundled in the blanket from the bed, Sadie is on the deck with an open notebook, and she's scribbling away. The soft hum of her sweet voice plucking notes from nothing fills my soul. My heart swells until it might burst from my chest. I can't say why it makes me so happy to see her writing. There's no way for me to know if she's having success, but her expression is serene, and that must be a good sign. Rather than bother her, I slip inside, put my camera away, and start some bacon in the oven. Bacon and eggs are always the order of the day when I wake up at the shore. As I heat the skillet, the front door opens. Good morning, Sadie says. Smiling over my shoulder, I love seeing her here. Did you get anything good going? She drops her notebook on the table. It's not bad. 
I'll get my guitar a little later and see if I can do anything with it. I crack eggs into a bowl. Are you hungry? Stepping into the small kitchen, she cranes her neck to look as I pour the eggs in a buttered pan. Starved. Then, if music can wait, I'll have breakfast for you in a few minutes. She smells like the sea air and Sadie. An intoxicating combination. You don't mind that I was working when you came back? I don't like the weariness in her voice. The eggs are beginning to cook, and I stir them. Did you mind that I took off to catch the sunrise with my camera before you woke up? She shakes her head and sits at the table. Most of the men in my past keep a double standard, Matthew. It's okay for them to work and make me wait, but my work never seems as important. The bacon timer pings, and I pull the sheet out of the oven. With tongs, I move bacon to drain on a paper towel. I add two pieces to a plate, scoop on some eggs, and grab a fork and napkin. Once it's in front of her, I lean in. Sadie, let's agree right now that our lives are equally important. I won't make you feel bad about anything if I can help it. My entire goal is to make you feel good. She stares at me with wide eyes and her lips part. Okay. I kiss her adorable nose. Eat your eggs before they get cold. Making myself a plate, I have to keep from getting angry about every man who made her feel bad. They aren't my problem, though. I wasn't exaggerating. Making her feel good is my purpose for as long as she'll let me. I guess I shouldn't be surprised when my phone rings on Wednesday afternoon and my cousin Emma's name comes up on screen. What's up, Em? What's up? What's up? Are you holed up at the shore with Sadie Baker? She sounds somewhere between amused and panicked. Sadie looks up from the couch where she stretched over her guitar to jot something in her notebook. She raises a brow and mouths, Me? I nod and feel the crushing of the end. Hold up is an unpleasant term. Why do you ask? Because there's a picture of the two of you that's gone viral on the internet. Emma mumbles something away from the phone. I'm texting it to you. The picture comes through with a ping. It's grainy, as if it was taken from pretty far away. We're on the beach. It's hard to tell it's us, but it is. My arms are wrapped around Sadie from behind, and we're looking out over the ocean. I bring the phone back to my ear. I see it. Lucas must have taken the phone from her. Hey, Matthew, sorry, buddy, but it will only be a matter of time before the press finds your house. If they're not outside already, you should head to New York before they descend like vultures. Sadie is on her feet and moving toward the windows. Holding up a hand, I head her off and peek through the blinds. There are two news crews vans in the street and a crowd of people surrounding them. I think it's too late. Shit. It's a moment before Lucas continues. Can I talk to Sadie? I hand over the phone. Yeah, I know. No, I'll just go talk to them and then we'll head out. No, there's no point in staying now that they've found me. Vacation time is over. She disconnects and hands me back the phone. I'm sorry. I pull her into my arms. I don't know where they were when they saw us or how they recognized you. She sighs against my chest. They just do. It's not your fault. If anyone is to blame, it's me. Now those assholes have found your house and will bother you for weeks. I kiss her cheek. Don't worry about me. I've been happier in the last four days than I've been in my entire life, Sadie. Me too. A tear slides down her cheek. Hey, don't cry. I'm still here. I'm only gone if you want me to be. I don't even know if that's why she's crying. Maybe she doesn't want anything more from me. Placing a palm flat on my chest, she pushes back. It will never be the same, Matthew. She points to the door. This is what it will be like every day. The pain arising in my chest is almost enough to bring me to my knees. So, this is it then? 
I don't see how it can be anything more. You'll come to hate me because I can't control the madness in my life. I don't want to watch that happen. She strides to the bedroom, grabbing her guitar and notebook on the way. I follow and watch her pack. After a moment, I nod and pack my clothes and camera. When she's done, I take her bag and both of mine. She slings her backpack over one shoulder and picks up her guitar case. I am sorry about all of this. I'm at the door to the bedroom when I turn back. Her eyes are full and shining. It's hard to keep myself from dropping everything and pulling her into my arms. Sadie, what's happening outside is not either of our faults. What's about to happen when we step outside is a bit outside our control. I don't know what you intend to say, but when I told you I would be here for you, I meant it. If you never want to see me again, it has nothing to do with those people, but I'll respect your decision, whatever it is. Heart bashed to bits, I walk to the front door and open it. Sadie pulls back her shoulders, lifts her chin, and precedes me down the step. She gets about halfway down before the first of at least ten reporters crowd the wooden railing and keep her from moving toward my car. They pepper her with questions. Who's the new man? Is this a fling? Are you engaged? Did you meet at the beach? How long have you known him? Are you exclusive? On and on it goes until I'm ready to start swinging luggage at these assholes. Sadie waits for them to quiet with a smile. A smile. Chapter 6 Sadie Once the reporter's quiet and stop snapping pictures, I can finally speak. I learned a long time ago there's no point answering the first barrage of questions. It's better to just make a short statement and move on. Inside, I'm dying the slow death of losing Matthew. Outside, I'm smiling at faces I can't stand. Thanks for ruining my vacation, guys. There's another round of inappropriate questions, which I ignore and wait for them to quiet. My friend and I came down here so I could get some songs written for my new album. I thought I might be able to work a few days, but you never let me get away. <laughs> I laugh as if that's funny, and they have the nerve to chuckle, too. Since there will be no peace at the beach now, we're heading back to the city. Please don't follow me. You already know where I live. Now, if you could back down the steps and let us get to the car, that would be great. Patricia Poller from The Engager shoves a phone microphone in my face. Matthew tenses behind me. Looking over my shoulder, I hope my eyes say, if you get mad, it will be worse. So, this guy isn't your boyfriend, Sadie. Who's the hunk? Patricia is going to write whatever she wants, no matter what I say. I want to punch her in her injected bright red lips. He's a friend. And don't you think I'm a bit old for a boyfriend, Patty? I gently push past and move them step by step to the ground. Matthew looks ready to kill someone, which is not a look I've seen before from him. He rounds the car and puts our things in the trunk, then comes back and opens the car door for me. I hand him my bag and guitar and slip inside the car. The questions are now directed at him. He stays silent as he puts my stuff in the back seat, rounds the car, and gets behind the wheel. It takes five minutes to back out of the driveway, and another thirty to get to the Garden State Parkway North. What can I say? If we stay together, he'll hate my life, and eventually me. If I let him go, my heart breaks. I should never have started this. His jaw ticks, and his eyes are fierce with rage and sorrow. Silence fills a long beat before he answers. I'm sorry you feel that way. It would be easier if he raged at me. You should be sorry, too. Nothing good ever comes of getting involved with me. Those reporters will find out where you live in Roseville and camp out there, too. And then they'll find someone else to bother when another rock star or actor takes a lover or gets a divorce. He takes the exit for I-95 and then a few quick maneuvers to get on the New Jersey turnpike. I don't know how to make him understand. We get off the turnpike and head toward the Holland Tunnel. 
It's hard to think when leaving him is so close to becoming a reality. When we hit daylight again, I take a deep breath. I've been down this road before, Matthew. I know how it goes, and it ends ugly. I never want to associate you with those feelings. It seems to me you already did. His lips draw into a tight line as he winds through the streets of New York to the Upper East Side. He stops in front of my building. Joe, my doorman, steps from the building and approaches the car. He sees it's me and smiles, then waits like a sentinel. Matthew turns to face me. Sadie, you don't get this kind of special every day. At least, I don't. Maybe it's different for you. If you were the server at the local diner, I'd be just as determined to show you that what's happening between us is not average. If I was a server, I'd hold on to you with both arms and never let you go. I've put the sorrow in his eyes, and I hate myself for it. Tears press the backs of my eyes and clog my throat. His smile is sad and devastating. I don't want to change you. I just want to be with you. You say that now, but it never lasts. It's better if we stay friends and let the rest be a nice memory. I slide my hand to the door handle. A nice memory. He repeats it with a nod of understanding. While I was falling in love, you were making a nice memory. His Adam's apple bobs as he swallows whatever else he was going to say. I'm struck dumb. No words come to me, and this is the moment when they should flow with all the poetry I can muster. All I can do is watch as he steps into the street and walks to the back of his car. He and Joe talk as Matthew hands over my bag. Tugging my ball cap over my eyes, I get out, grab my bag and guitar, and run into the building like a coward. In the studio, a week after I last saw Matthew, Lucas strides in and shakes hands with the band. He checks with my producer at the board, then comes into the booth to see me. How are you? Good. Great. Lots of new material. The crazy happy is not fooling anyone. Not even me. Hey, Mike? Lucas calls to my producer on the other side of the glass. Mike pushes his long, dark, curly hair behind his ear as he looks up. Can you kill the audio? Give us a minute. Mike nods, and an instant later the hum of electronics fades. Crossing his arms, Lucas narrows green eyes on me. Why are you doing this to yourself? There's no sense pretending. I don't know what he's talking about. I look in the mirror every morning. I can see how miserable I look. I'm protecting Matthew. Matthew is a grown man who can take care of himself. He doesn't need or, from what I can tell, want your protection. He's as unhappy as you clearly are. Lucas leans on one of the extra stools for backup singers. He'd be more unhappy if he and I stayed together and he saw what a mess my life can be. The images that haunt my dreams, where reporters and fans inundate Matthew every day, make me cringe. A knowing look accompanies Lucas's nod. So what's your plan, Sadie? You're just going to stay single for life? Never let anyone get close enough to love you? Matthew's last words to me ring in my head. I'm sure I'll find a musician who will understand the life. That's a better scenario. Matthew will find a nice girl from New Jersey and have six kids like the rest of his family. It is a wonder my chest doesn't collapse and crush my heart. Tonight... My nightmare will be full of blue-eyed babies that look like their father, but I won't be in the picture at all. Lucas groans. You've already had at least four affairs with musicians, and that's just the ones I know about. How did those work out? I shrug because we both know they were all disasters. I don't bother correcting his low count. Still, not one of them hurt as much as letting Matthew go does. Shaking his head, Lucas says, 
I guess we should get to work then. I told the label you'd have something to show them next week. I'm ready. I force Sonny into my voice when it's the last thing I feel and move in front of the microphone to pour out every emotion that four days with the love of my life can bring. Chapter 7 Matthew Scrolling through all the photos I took at the beach has become an obsession, and I need to stop and move on. More than two weeks later, I don't feel any less in love or destroyed that I did standing in front of her apartment watching her run away from me. My phone pings with an incoming text. Emma, it's Friday night. If you don't come out of that apartment and have a drink with me at Billy's Mill, I'm sending your brother, or worse, your sister, in there to drag you down. I type back, I'm not good company. You never were. Get your ass down the steps. I'm out front, Emma adds a winky face. The last thing I want is my brother or sisters trying to find out what happened and peppering me with questions. I close out the photography program and shut down my computer. True to her word, Emma is waiting with a big smile as I get in her car. She pulls out and heads toward Billy's. You probably feel better already. You can't stay in a small apartment avoiding the world forever. I had a pretty good plan to try it out for a few months. I suppose not. Smile fading, Emma says, You need to get out. What kind of cousin would I be if I didn't help? The kind that minds her own business, I say lightly. Emma bursts out laughing. <laughs> what family do you think you came from? Lanes do not mind their own business. Never have, never will. I can't help smiling over that because it's absolutely true. She turns off the main street. You know, Lucas went to Sadie's recording sessions this week. Can we not talk about Sadie, Em? I love you, but I just can't discuss her yet. My chest is so tight it's hard to breathe. I can make an appearance at Billy's, then sneak out and walk home. The last thing I want is to watch a bunch of happy people get drunk, dance, make out, and hook up. Emma pats my knee. Sure thing. Once she's parked the car, we head inside. I've been coming to Billy's Mill Tap Room since I was 21. It's familiar. It's filled with a bunch of my family members and friends. It's a friendly place but no one even turns when we walk in. They're riveted to the small stage where the band usually plays. It's only a quarter past eight, early for the band. The soft tones of an acoustic guitar roll past the attentive crowd. Then I hear Sadie's voice. She's singing about falling in love and the rushing in of the tide. Sunrise on the ocean and an easy silence between lovers. Before I know it, I'm at the risers that make up the stage behind the dance floor. The song sounds like it's about us, but she's singing about loving someone so much it hurts. She says that she never wants to know life without him. Him is me. I know it is with all my heart. As she strums the final chords, her gaze meets mine, and it's like I'm in a bubble where only we exist. Her eyes are full of doubt as she puts her guitar aside. Is it possible she doubts my feelings? Rounding to the front of the stage, I reach out, pull her from the stool, and drag her into my arms. I love you. Her lips touch the shell of my ear. I love you too, Matthew. I'm sorry. The bubble pops, and the thunderous noise of bar patrons hits me. How I didn't hear it before is a weird kind of magic. People are slapping me on the back and talking to me, but I don't hear what they're saying. Grabbing Sadie's hand, I head for the back door. If this was any place else on earth, there would be no escaping the fans inside. But this is Roseville, and these people are my people. We step on the concrete landing to the back steps. Beyond a small space where Billy parks, it overlooks a field and hills. 
As the door closes, there's only our breathing and bullfrogs singing. My heart is trying to pound out of my chest. Leaning on the metal stair rail, I watch the darkness. You never have to say you're sorry to me, Sadie. I don't know if you want me after the way I ran. She's behind me, and there's still fear in her voice. Turning, I meet her shy eyes. With only the lamp next to the door, half her face is in shadow, and still she takes my breath away. I don't know what love means where you come from. I take her hand. With me. It means I'll watch you always. She steps close and wraps her arms around me. Her body relaxes into mine. I can't change my life or the madness it creates around me, I know. She's like sunshine in my arms. Flowers and fresh air fill my senses. You're going to hate it sometimes. I'll deal with it if you promise me something. I ease out of the bear hug. Eyes shining, she says, Anything? I want to take away the worry and pain in her voice. Promise me that on the worst days, you'll still be mine. Leaning forward, she kisses me hard. She demands more, and I open and devour her mouth. Breathless, she pulls back. I'm yours, Matthew Lane. Today and always. As I crush her to me, she fits me like we're two halves of a whole. The brain fog of seeing her again begins to lift. You wrote a song about us. Baby, the entire album is about us. She snuggles in deeper against me. The door behind her opens. Lucas clears his throat. Um, sorry, but as good as the people of this town are, I can't hold them back forever. Will you give them one more song, Sadie? We both laugh as she lets me go. These are my people now, too. I'll play a couple before Matthew and I go home. Being a part of home is all I'll ever long for, no matter where our careers take us. As long as we can go home together, we'll be all right. Epilogue Sadie I know I said I would be happy to play a few more for my new town, and everyone was great. Still, getting back to Matthew's adorable apartment is the best part of my night. I'm tearing his clothes off before we're down the hall, leaving bits of laundry as we go. His lips are like a balm to my tortured soul. Tears pour down my cheeks, and I can't stop them. Freezing, he kisses me softer. His tenderness is so sweet. My sobbing gets worse. What is it? I wasn't sure you'd want me. I was terrified when I came to Roseville tonight. I guess this is just relief. It's embarrassing, but I can't stop crying. He combs his fingers through my hair to clear my face and look me in the eye. He kisses my cheek. I love you, Sadie. I'll always want you, no matter what. Emotion clogs my throat. I know. I know that now. In his arms, he carries me, half-dressed in jeans and my bra, to the bed and cradles me in his lap. Let it out then, baby. Sobbing on his bare chest, I wrap my arms around him and do what I never do. I let it all go. I hide nothing and hiding behind a smile and a song is what I do. I've been doing it since I first stepped into a record executive's office. His fingers caress my back in long strokes, and he tells me how much he loves me. No one has ever been so right, and I know no one else ever will be. This is it. I laughed at people who said they fell hard in love, I should find every one of them and apologize. Like Alice in the rabbit hole, I'm out of control in love with Matthew Lane, and nothing is ever going to change that. I wipe my face, and heat fills my cheeks. I'm going to go wash my face and blow my nose. 
Don't move. His smile melts me from the inside out. I'm not going anywhere. People say things like that all the time, but Matthew means it. A pinch of doubt tries to force its way through when I think of how there will be crowds and photographs wherever he goes. Pushing it away, I wash my face and take off my jeans before returning to the bedroom. The bed is turned down, and he's lying naked on the sheets, his blue eyes lit with passion. I moved. I forgive you. In a black lace bra and matching thong, I leap onto the bed, and here I thought I was going to be undressed. Gripping my hip, he skims his fingers under the lace and slides around to the strip of satin between my ass cheeks. You're perfect. His shaft is too tempting, and I stroke the soft skin. Touching him turns me on, and my panties are already soaked as he groans my name. Tracing the satin and lace back along my hip, he continues to the front and pushes the tiny scrap of cloth aside. He dips his finger between my folds, and I lose the rhythm of stroking him. Sensation flows to every molecule of my body, and in seconds my orgasm is already pushing for release. Come for me, Sadie. And that's all it takes. I explode with delight and grab his shoulders, trying to stay in the world as my body shakes with rapture. Holding me as if he'll never let go, he whispers love words and tells me how beautiful I am. I need more of this incredible man. Rolling him toward me, I lay on my back and bend my knees. With one stroke, he buries himself inside me. Sadie. He holds still, driving us both crazy. I lift my hips. I need more of you, Matthew. As if I've loosed a titan, he makes love to me fast and hard. In minutes, I'm coming again, and he stills while it rolls through me. Moving inside me again, he goes slower until he can't take any more and pounds out his release, sending me into a third mind-bending orgasm. Rolling to the side, he collapses. Sadie? Hmm. I'm going to do this better at some point. I swear it. He's gasping for breath, and his legs shake from the aftermath. I turn to look at him in profile. What? I can't imagine I can survive better. He chuckles. No. That was all good. What then? I find his hand and thread my fingers through his. I want to ask you to marry me. I literally can't breathe. I've forgotten how. My silence is not good, and I know it. I... I... I lift to my elbow so I can look at his face. Of course, I'll marry you. His serious scowl blooms into a huge smile. I'm going to make you so happy. And I believe him. This has been Lane to Flame by Andy Fenical, read for you by Michael Pierce. Welcome back. Hey, so thanks so much, Andy, for being with us this week. We really appreciate you giving us Lane to Fame. This has been super fun. And make sure you guys join us next week. We have Ember Davis with us. And oh. she's, yeah, I know. She's brought us a book called Girls Night Out. And I'm so excited to read it. I can't wait. I love following her on Facebook because she is so informative about books <laughs> that are out, books that are coming out. That's great. All I the love time doing she's that. Sharing stuff. Yeah, yeah. She's really I great about that. I wanted to mention a few things. Yeah. The Lizard of Love should be out. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. They're our newest release, or like Sir Riley's newest release. If you've been waiting for that book. Somebody that said one's... on TikTok the other day, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Somebody said, oh, my God, you sound like the girl on, the, on Read Me Romance. I was like, funny thing about that. <laughs> really? Yes. That's Somebody hilarious. commented on one of the videos I made and said, you sound just like the girl on Read Me Romance. <laughs> 
Wouldn't you know? <laughs> <laughs> what did she say? Did she, did Nothing. She I don't know. I, rep- I replied. Funny thing about that. And then she never <laughs> replied back. And I was like, maybe that was a dick thing to say. But I was like, really? <laughs> but, I mean, I, I guess she, she just didn't put two and two together. Or maybe she didn't see my name. Like, she didn't see oh, Alexa yeah. Riley, like, under it. I don't know. Like, when she just commented on the video. But I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, you're but fine. I, just I also that. wanted to mention that those, p- the Remy Rainbow, Freebie romance paper books will be up then because you're oh, getting yeah, the them in the bags. mail yes. like this week or the first of next week. So mm-hmm. if you wanted the read me romance, have we talked about that? I don't think the so. The paperbacks. Yes. So the paperbacks from last year's summer book box, we had like a case left of them. So we decided to put them on the website. So we'll just leave it up. And if they, whenever they sell out, we'll take it down. But God, there's we'll got to be, what, 12 books in there? Oh, there's 10, it's 10 authors, I think. 10 there. authors? So is it 10, 10 books? Authors? Yeah, I think it's five books. and five. Okay. Yeah, but it's two paperbacks. There's volume one and volume two. So they're sold together in a set. They're so yeah. cute when you slide mm-hmm. them together. It makes a complete cover, but it's also mm-hmm. a cover by itself. And it makes a big heart when you put both of them together. It's a big heart. It's so pretty. So, so those I are love up those. on the website while mm-hmm. supplies last. You get both yes. of them. You have to buy them together yes. in a set. Mm-hmm. So I'll put the links for everything we talked about, all the books we mentioned mm-hmm. in the show notes and all that stuff. Don't forget, you can click on your little app and send the show notes right to yourself in an email. Yep. So you can remember everything. <laughs> I think that's it then. So tell them what to do. Fuck your day up. Make today your bitch. Don't be a dick. Bye, guys. Bye. Read me romance. Read, read me romance. Read me romance. Read, read me romance. 